tegyünk valami. To do something, so that we can feel that we have done something, even if it's just a very small thing, something good. To get to know our world, to get to know one another, and in the meantime, ourselves. To proceed and to arrive somewhere. To contribute to the development of the world. Everybody is born into this world with a mission. And we should be at home somewhere in the world. The problem in the world today is that people are very much spoiled. There is prosperity and there are hip things that are not really needed. People in Transylvania, however, have not been spoiled and they have suffered a lot. People in Romania were foredoomed to suffering and Hungarian people in Transylvania even more because they were qualified as people without a mother country. Um, Suffering, pain, torment are very positive and doping qualities. It's good to experience them and survive them. What will happen to this place if everybody leaves for the West in order to live well? These people are homesick. I think everybody is homesick in some way, because at the regular meetings of secondary school students, you can see that people wish to come home. They come home at Christmas, they come home at Easter, they come home all the time, but many people do not dare to make the step dictated by their heart. I have never been attracted by money, therefore I moved home, because I have things to do here. I haven't regretted it. Of course, the situation is more difficult financially, but if you have fewer pretensions, you can live cheaper. Interestingly, there are people who have come home from Hungary and there are still more and more of them coming home. We don't have real purposes, real dreams, but our dreams are built up in us by who knows who and with who knows what purpose. We have relatives living abroad and they haven't gone far away. They are just living in Hungary, but they cry every night. Now they are in pension. They have grown old there. They can't come home anymore as they've lived there for 20 to 30 years. As they say, they wonder themselves why they have stayed there for their pensioners' years. Their place is not over there. Everybody has a place where they are born. I was born here, in Djerdjö, Orotva, in the Seike land, and it means that I have to do something somewhere here. We go thousands of kilometers away to China, to Tokyo. We go everywhere, even to Dubai to work, and we are not in the right place. We have money, but we are unhappy. Our place is probably not there. If our place was there, we would have been born there and we would have an oil rig. But as we were born here in Seike land, we have a duty here, and if we get off track, it's not sure that life will be pious to us. It is good if we come home. I am not the only one. There are several of us. There are my classmates as well, who had left earlier, and then they came back. People go to see the world and try to find their places. Others may have had the same discovery as I have had. No matter they have euros, dollars, marks or Swiss francs there. No matter they had a big salary. Once I was also tempted, so to say, when I was in Canada. I summed up the money I earned and I thought it was a big amount. 
but the most important thing is where you feel at home. It is the typical story of Abel, I always remember it. He left as well, and he also tried a lot of things. And the problem was not that he had to work, although from the book it appears that the Seike guy didn't like working. The real problem was about people, about communication with people. Everybody comes from a different place and everybody keeps running around. There is no time for each other. One has to fix appointments with others. Of course, there are some people who went to live abroad, accumulated a certain capital, and then they said, why should I invest here? Or, I may be able to help people at home. Or, I may be able to live better on this money at home, as we very often think of ourselves. I think people come home because they are ambivalent. More people would come back if it was allowed up there. And I think this country could be revived so that everybody could feel well in it. I was feeling a bit claustrophobic in Italy. I needed some stimulus some um, to see the world and to learn about new cultures, especially. I was living in Milan. I, I didn't see much going on. I mean, it was everyone doing the same thing, going to the office nine to five and thinking about money, how to spend the money, what car to buy and, and going on holiday. It, that's not the meaning for me, for, for life, meaning of life. That's why I left. So we came here a couple of times uh, while visiting, you know, going to Bucharest on holiday and visiting um, my husband's parents. And I liked the place. I found it very wild, a very uh, pristine, uh, also very strong in a sense that it's, it's, it's not easy to live here. Not everybody would live here. Um, but I know that I, I sometimes you just take decisions out of you know gut feelings. I knew I, I, I had to be here, so we we decided to build a holiday house, and then after a few years we decided to spend longer time here, because we wanted to be more in touch with nature, spend some time, spend a longer time um, growing things and being more responsible for our food production and, and stuff like that. And in Italy, it's, it's, it's more challenging from another perspective. You need more money. There, there you need money. A lot of people ask here in Bucharest as well whether I am satisfied with my situation as a rock star, as a musician, as a singer. In the term freelance, there is the word free, and freedom is the most important thing for me. In some way, I always feel at home when I go to Germany, but I've understood that I will always be only a guest there. I was born here so that I can try to make a change here, to add something to the quality of life, to improve life here. I am what I feel myself to be. I am a world citizen.
Sándor Török expressed it very well in The New Adventures of Kökösi and Boboisa. The book used to be banned, but luckily it is available now. It says that everybody writes down in a book what their duty is in their life on earth. Later on, however, people usually forget about it, and at night, when we are sleeping, the angels read out for us our duty for next day. We usually forget about this as well, but there are people who somehow remember it. I feel that I remember more and more of what I wrote into my book. I think everybody was put on this earth with an individual mission, and I've often experienced that when I have an intention, it comes down to me from the highest layer of the spiritual world, and my own life is an intention like that as well. I have come here with an intention, prepared, so to say. My husband started it. He was a sickly person himself, and he started to heal himself with different plants. Then he developed the method. He started reading books. First he tried everything on himself, and then he tried the herbs on others to help. Then a lot of letters arrived. He had helped a lot of people, and many letters of gratitude came back. We have been organizing camps for children for a long time, for more than 10 years, and it has turned out that fewer and fewer people manage to find a real camp for their children, where there is time to really give them something. After seeing that, the idea came to organize a big camp where many people could come, more children, more families, and not for a high price. As we were thinking, the idea of children's festivals occurred to us, and a big emphasis was laid on the parents as well. You not only have to teach at the theology faculty, but one has to get the feeling that the church is the first, not the vicarage, the church has to be the first. The renovation of the church was a following step. People who used to live here in Stano told me that there used to be a road here in such bad shape it could barely be used. It was started by my predecessor, and at weekends, on Saturdays, sometimes 40 to 50 people came here to do community work, with tractors, buffalo and horses with carts, as pedestrians, and there was an old alabaster mine here, which was closed, and we took the refuse here on the road. There was a rule that the one who arrived last had to take something for the others, obviously not sent kirai or the local borsiki mineral water. I always had my classes on religion and on Saturday, and I was the last to arrive at the community work, so I always took two liters of wine saying, sorry I'm late, dear friends, and people were expecting my gift. In fact, the community work brought the religious community together, but earlier I had also seen that the people were scattered about. Obviously, everybody does it in a different way. As I've always liked playing football, I always thought, no matter where life takes me, the only important thing is that there should be football. So I gathered young people who had moved away and we started playing matches on the football field. They came home, the old people came to see the matches and there was a good atmosphere. After that, when the renovation of the church started, the whole village was there. People were passing the tiles to one another. We talked a lot and when I went to the fields to work, people came to help me. Men and women opened up at those occasions, and the atmosphere became very much different. I like the Kolaka movement a lot, because in many places, like Batskomodorosh, where I live, there was no playground in the courtyards of kindergartens. There were no toys, because there was no money. The local government had no money, so people didn't do anything. Then two or three years ago, we very simply built up a place in the courtyard of the kindergarten. We didn't need anything. We had to gather a lot of people. Some of them took the potatoes, others the onions. Some people gathered the willow twigs. Others cut them and some people built it up. Now it is there. We have made it together and we keep looking after it. Community has a huge power. It is getting killed in us. 
you can hear in every American film that people can only count on themselves, but it is not true. I have tried several times, with very little success, to set up an association of homeopaths in Transylvania, because it is important. There is a Romanian association, there are a lot of things done and the issue has been handled in a clever way. But we need a center where we can turn to one another. It is more difficult somehow to weld people together. It's more difficult to start things here than in Hungary. I haven't been able to find the difference yet, but probably people in Hungary are more open and they have a better ability to organize things. That's my experience. Luckily, homeopathy is in a good situation in Romania. The training of homeopaths was not interrupted several times, as in Hungary. In Romania, these things are somehow more flexible, and also other things, like vaccinations, are treated in a much more flexible way. For example, my neonatologist colleague says that when babies are born, parents can request that they shouldn't be given the BCG vaccination. It shows great flexibility on a European level, because in Hungary, for example, these things are held in iron fists. In Romania, there are homeopathy training programs in Bucharest and in Kolozsvár as well. Romanian homeopath doctors are very clever. There are some of them here in Vasárhely as well. Nowadays, students can choose studying homeopathy at the university in Vasárhely, but not in the Hungarian section, interestingly. Two years ago, when I decided to deal with this, the opportunity came and I heard about a school in Budapest where I could study. It was the Free University of Natural Healing Methods. I enrolled and when I looked around the first day, I was sure that it was intended for me, because it was really about how to heal, about what a human being is, what we consist of, not only of physical body, but of other parts as well. We learn about what makes us sick, how we can be treated and cured, and how medicinal plants can be involved. This is my part. It is a small area of healing and our whole life. But now I am learning how to make a whole out of these many little parts. Um, this organic garden that you have seen is an experiment. We have been growing vegetables and fruits for two years and we are still experimenting about what can be best grown here, which plants like the climate and the soil here. We have just started a new project in Lendja Farva. There are problems about the water supply and we are forced to turn to a new solution here. This solution has been tried by very few people or maybe by nobody at all. We collect rainwater and we try to provide our water supplies from that. First, Everybody was surprised asking why we hadn't thought of digging a well. People kept asking why we didn't dig a well or get connected to the local water supply network. Of course, it could be easily done, but nobody can guarantee that we would have water with these solutions. There will be quite a lot of rainwater in this area, even in years of drought. This has to be explained to people. Local people here turn to rainwater only when they are forced to do so or not even then. We learn about how to heal, and how illnesses are created in people. More and more research proves it, and old Eastern theories and ancient Hungarian theories are all based on the idea that our illnesses are created by the psyche, most often by means of complaining. From the moment I start saying that the sunshine is bad for my head, now I'm sure that I'll have a headache in the evening. I create a headache for myself in the evening. And then it's good for me to go home, to go out somewhere and to complain to the world that I worked so hard that I've got a headache, and I really have a headache. And in a worst case, I may even take medicine, which may be a solution for the symptoms, but not for my psychological problems. They may even be suppressed by it, it mostly depends on us, that we keep being sick and complain and cry all the time. Are you satisfied with your life? If I look at what I have achieved so far in my life, I am satisfied. If I look at the things I haven't been fulfilled, 
I would need to work a bit more. Absolutely. Yes, I am absolutely satisfied. Of course, completely. That's great, and with your financial situation? Nobody is satisfied with it, but it's all right. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. I'm satisfied, I think. There are people in much worse situations, but it's quite good for me. Thanks God, I'm fine. Transylvania has been preserved by the church. The historical church has preserved Hungarian people. The big problem is that the historical church has also become very materialistic and this ought to be changed. We should open up. It shouldn't be about money anymore. There shouldn't be envy. Colleagues should not be enemies. Once we have finished our studies of theology, we have to think about how to save our religious communities, how to achieve that children will be christened, that there should be fewer divorces. Doing the preparation for marriage, instead of hocus-pocus, we should show, not with medieval devices, but in other ways, we should show how to find love in our hearts and if it is found, God will show us solutions for the given situations. This world says, I am technology, I am a machine, I am a helper, I can resolve everything, I have an answer to everything. If I grow up in a society where mother and father work from morning till night, not for having very good circumstances or for having an Aldi or a BMW, but to be able to earn a living or pay for the bank loan that was forced on them, it is difficult. It's difficult to get something from home. Son, I would rather buy you the mobile phone or the tablet, just leave me alone to earn the money for it. In the meantime, I notice it more and more that it is important and necessary to recognize my purpose, what I am good for, and the importance of the family. It is a very interesting thing. We hear about it before the festival and many people ask us if we manage to engage children without mobile phones and computers and other gadgets. And we do. They forget about them. They don't remember them here. We must be smart and use technology in a positive way and and yeah, not not being uh, uh, controlled by it. Use, use it. Using it for our at our advantage in in a sensitive, smart, smart way. I think probably one way there are detox clinics in China for mm. kids who are addicted to video games. I think they do lots of physical exercise. They are in a community, they are all together. So there is human contact. That's what now in big cities you you miss. I mean, even when you were in a commuting, you're on a, on a bus or a train, people are always, you know, with a mobile or with a tablet. You don't even look at each other's face. I, every now and then I wonder if something happens on a, on a train, then uh, there won't be any witnesses, you know, because everybody will keep looking and maybe with the camera if something, someone has very, you know, uh, prompt reflex, but otherwise you don't look with your eyes anymore. Computer experts talk about a lot of things. For example, about how computers mysteriously influence the human brain, the human heart, the human glands, our internal organs, like the liver. It is the frequency of the processor. I work for hours and my body that has a lot of different frequencies suffers for hours because these frequencies disturb my internal organs. This is one thing. Everybody can think of it and make a decision. I experienced it for sure that my liver felt it, my head felt it, my heart felt it, in different moments, in different hours, in different ways. But apart from that, I know that I was lucky because I worked on a computer for the first time at the age of 25. Then my nervous system had already been developed. But the nervous system of a baby is not there. It doesn't exist yet, or the nervous system of a two to three year old has hardly been formed. Putting a laptop or an iPad in the lap of such a child is worse than the Holocaust because it is your child and you kill him or her with your own hands, not now, but you don't know when. The child may not get cancer, but he may not be able to engage in anything in life because he will not have the strength to find out what to do in this new world, for example, in this perfect computer world. 
Openness is missing from people. People are not able to try things and to open up to new things. What would happen if a program like Ignatas was set up not only for Stana, but for Transylvania, or for other regions beyond the border as well, and several well-to-do families could pay for the education of a child, mainly at universities? Morni was the first one who was supported like this, but since then, children from Sharvar, Nyasu, or other regions have been supported, and it is really good. We haven't made restrictions. We have been thinking about how to keep them here, if not even in Stana, but in Transylvania at least. We always said we would not interfere with life in this way. This was the final decision, that everybody should find their own place in life. Of course we urge them to stay at home, but they don't have to pay the support back if they don't. And of course, it would be nice if when they get a job, they would also contribute to these funds, as they were able to go to secondary school or high school thanks to this system. This is how Ignatas works. It has been working for years now. The problem about music is that it is taught. The problem about music is that it is taught, and the biography of Zoltan Kodai has to be learnt. It has to be learnt what he had done, and how important he is, and it is a very destructive thing, because it ought to be done simply. Music ought to be taught with music. If you go to a bookshop and find a book of Omram Mikhail Ivanhoff, or a book of Carlos Castaneda, or a book of Rudolf Steiner, and if you read them through and feel that there is a relationship between things hidden behind the pages and your own soul, it is very important in your life. Something happens, there is a real meeting. I think that there are no music notes in heaven, but I think the music played by heavenly creatures has a written score. The music of human beings is not composed. People should reach the point where they can play their own music. My first memory as a child is that there was a record on the record player and I could hear the speech of Karoj Korsh. I remember his strong voice. I remember hearing Shandor Petrofi's poems as well, but I most remember Karoj Korsh's voice. When I hear his voice, I always remember my first experience clearly and it rings in my ears. He was a real spiritual man here in Transylvania. He represented the spirituality of humanity. But in those days it was not very obvious what he said. I think it is being understood now. It's like when a clay pot is being shaped. I don't know which phase of it we are in now. But it's going on, I think. Transylvanianism has been manifested through the spirituality of Karoj Korsh, and it makes people be able to live better together. In my circle of friends, I hope everybody is seeking unity, and I am seeking it as well. Üzenek nektek, ti új emberek. Én, a régi ember. Járom a tövises ösvényt, és hosszú esztendőkön által körülfújt fagyos szél, és perzselt a nap és nem sokára talán utolsó leszek, az utolsók között. De lesznek, akik utánam jönnek, az én maradékaim. Amikor én már elpihentem, erős ifjú lábakkal nyomomba lépnek ők, és nem szállnak le a hegyről, hogy láncos rabjai legyenek hírnek, dicsőségnek és idegen kultúrának, mert erősek lesznek, hatalmasok, és magyarok. Az én lábom nyomát pedig eltemeti a hó, de síromon sohasem lesz korhat a fejfa, de a felén boruló domb virágos lesz mindig. És emlegetni fognak engem is, apáimat is, az én véreim. Az én munkámat folytatják ők, és az én életem örökké való lesz bennük, mert én itthon maradtam.